therapy. Welcome to our weekly three minute therapy podcast and YouTube. I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein, a clinical psychologist with a private practice, and I've written a number of books. One of them is Three Minute Therapy, which discusses REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, devised by Albert Ellis in the 1950s. And he was my therapist and my mentor when I was 18. Uh, I'm also here with my co-host, Mick Berry. Mick and I wrote a book on REBT and uh, public speaking anxiety called Stage Fright. And we have uh, as a guest, Howard Berman, who is a fan of Stoicism and CBT. Howard is a cognitive behavior librarian in Brooklyn. Yes. So uh, how, yeah, so Stoicism has a few main principles, mm -hmm. and maybe you can elaborate on some of these. One is the importance of acceptance. Another one is like what you get if you don't uh, prefer what's happening then prefer it, which is something we'd like to discuss with you further. Right. And the founder of Stoicism was Zeno of Athens, and mm -hmm. then some Stoics who came after him were Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus. Mm -hmm. And so Howard, am I correct that Stoicism talks about four virtues, wisdom, justice, courage, and moderation? Yes, that is, that's, I, I know what I know about Stoicism comes from Professor Stevens' book, Introduction to the Enchiridon, the Handbook of Epictetus. And what I, the way I come to think of it is that if you have any doubts about what Stoicism teaches, you ask yourself, what did the great exemplars of Stoicism, like Epictetus and Socrates and Marcus Aurelius and Seneca, what, how did they act? So Stoicism is, a, it's inferred from the behavior of great people like Socrates. So Socrates practiced a life, a life of virtue, and he decided that <clears throat> it's important to do what's right than to lose things that aren't important ultimately because they're not within your control, like life, like fame, like, like any um, dispreferred, um, um, dispreferred item. So, so the there's some things that are preferred and some things that are not preferred, but they're not important because the only thing that counts is what's within our control and what's not within our control, what's up to us and what's not up to us. And stoicism, in my opinion, even though it influenced um, rational, emotional, behavioral therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy, it's very different. And I that's what surprised me when I um, started talking about it with Professor Stevens by email who was a teacher of mine at Penn like 40 years ago. And what shocked me is that I told him about cognitive behavioral therapy and sent him a link to a, a, a page explaining it. And he said, oh, these are all interesting. When he looked at all or nothing thinking, he said, oh, that means you should go all out at everything and because it's not worth doing something, whether it's not worth doing something unless you go all the way. And my first reaction to that was that that's not what a cognitive behavioral therapist would say, even though I can put what Professor Stevens said in context is it's stoicism is aspirational. You try your best, and if you don't make it, you realize you're imperfect and you accept that. And so I started reading his book, um, which I can show, um, the Enchiridon. And it, it was what, what I came to conclude from that is that therapies like RET being cognitive behavioral therapy, they they wish they seek to adjust our thinking to a more balanced way of thinking and thus to adjust our behavior. And they take the medical model, which focuses on something that's bothering you, like whether it's a, a diagnosis like anxiety or depression or a, a life problem like a relationship problem or 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 work, and while co 
Stoicism aims to virtue and virtue in the ancient world was defined differently than we usually take virtue to be. And so virtue meant that like, because life was a little harder in some ways back then, you faced problems every day, you faced people insulting you, being rude to you, you know, stealing things from you. Um, I, I can't begin to imagine what, but uh, Marcus Aurelius has a famous saying about that. And um, it, it's like reality, the way I put it, it was more in your face. So you had to make very hard decisions all the time. And people, I, I, as I said earlier, you go to the exemplars like Socrates. Socrates was tried for um, impiety in, in Athens. And he, he decided the most important thing for him was that death is not really not that scary because it's beyond my control. And he said, it's more important to practice virtue, which is to keep my station um, helping Athens be a better place, helping my fellow Athenians. Um, his stoicism focuses on relationships and having good relationships with people and doing your role in society and living according to nature and according to reason. And um, Socrates decided that virtue is more important. And, and that's something, and I have theories about that, um, about how that worked back then and why it might not work today in the same way. And go on. Yeah, so, yeah, so we'll get into that. I did have uh, one question or one thing I wanted to mention, and then we'll give Mick a chance. And sure. that and that is, you had mentioned that REBT is based on the medical model, but I have a different view, and that is, okay, it's, it's based it's based on the educational model. We I, teach. I, we I just want to finish that, Howard. We mm -hmm. teach people uh, what's causing <clears throat> their emotional problems, their musts and shoulds, and mm -hmm. we teach them how to uproot their must and should thinking and then how to practice that, as you mentioned with the Stoics, in their life. I see. Is, yeah. So do you think it's different than cognitive behavioral therapy in that regard? Uh, no, cognitive behavior therapy is also based on an educational model. Mick, I see. Mick, let, me ask, let me ask you this then. Yeah. It, it seemed to me like the, the in Stoicism, um, as practiced in the ancient world, the Stoic, part of the stoic um progressors uh, or acolyte as uh, professor stevens called him um changes all of his dysfunctional thoughts and replaces it with replaces them with um maxims more positive maxims like anger isn't good um the only pain doesn't matter the only thing is to act virtuously and in my experience as a patient um cognitive behavioral therapy and maybe rational emotional therapy um, are more targeted. So like somebody comes in um, with, with an issue and you change their thinking regarding that issue and then whatever issue is coming up, but you don't change everything they think about all of life, even though the therapy might have broader effects. That was my impression. I think that's correct. Mick, you wanted to say something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have uh, several things to say. Yeah, and first off, REBT, Rational Motive Behavior Therapy, uh, doesn't attempt to change every some all of somebody's thinking. It's simply to get people, teach people how to think realistically, specifically not hanging on to their demands, retaining the desire behind the demand, but mm -hmm. getting rid of demands while keeping desire. Now, Howard, you use the word balanced uh, that REBT aims for teaching people to think in a balanced way. I would disagree. I wouldn't say balanced. For one right. thing, I don't really know what balanced means. REBT teaches people to think in a rational way, which is synonymous with realistic. Now, you did say the word dysfunctional, and <clears throat> dysfunctional, something is dysfunctional by looking at life unrealistically or having unrealistic 
and irrational thoughts and and we become functional our thoughts become more functional by mm-hmm. thinking rationally thinking realistically then we're able to function in the real world my therapist Emmett Felton once told me all mental disturbance can really be reduced to one concept reality should not be reality right i i would i'm going to accept what you say is correct because i i might be wrong and i'd have to think about it more and it's uh, what i what i'm interested i was thinking that like the stoics say the the essence the most important thing about reality is what's up to us and what's not up to us and even though we as patients or as therapists might recognize that their understanding logical understanding to them at least of what's up to us and what's not up to us is a lot more extreme than what we would say so we mean, meaning would, by uh, we you mean the stoics i i me and i assume other people would agree i wouldn't want to include uh, presume that you would agree with me but like if, for instance like if somebody was to become a stoic they would have to re- remind themselves constantly that people who they love are going to die someday. They would have to not enjoy go. They would not. They would not pursue pleasures like nice houses and fancy food because that is not what's important. And self control is so important that you have to forgo a lot of luxuries. It's an aesthetic, It's basically an aesthetic philosophy, and it's, it's a lot different than what it sounds like you're saying works in RETB. And what my experience in a limited way of cognitive behavioral therapy is. So their notion of reality is might be a little and and adjust and being in, in agreement with reality, I think might be a little different than our idea of what reality is. Yeah, now, Mick, we, I'll let's give Mick a chance. I'll yeah, I wanted to say um uh, mm-hmm. REBT advocates pleasure. I've heard Albert Ellis himself say we are hedonists. REBT does distinguish short-term pleasure from long-term pleasure, right. but <clears throat> REBT would say if you enjoy eating a meal and if the meal is good for you, or even if it just doesn't detract from your health whatsoever, go mm-hmm. ahead and enjoy eating the meal. If you like to have sex and the sex is um, contributing to your happiness and there it doesn't detract in any way, Go ahead and have sex. And if you like having a nice house that you cited, Howard, then have a nice house. So right. it's true having a nice house is ephemeral. Uh, everything for us humans is I'm not I'm not here to advocate for stoicism, but stoicism would differ from that. And it, it's instructive for us to see exactly why where the difference is. Yeah. And I and, and I and I I'm I'm I was just, I mean, I'm struck by the differences between the ancient Stoic idea of life and they lived, they lived in, a, in, a, in a life, in a situation where self-mastery was so much, so important that you had to forgo a lot of things to maintain your self-respect and your dignity. And I find that interesting and I'm not advocating for it, even though I might ultimately do advocate for that. But it's just just looking at it not as a philosopher or psychologist. This is somebody who's reading a book about it. That's from experience. That strikes me as very interesting, and yeah. and I and, and it's it's like radically different. And so, from if I was to decide to become a Stoic, I would have it would be like changing religions in some way, and it would be like yeah. I would have to change my whole lifestyle, and it would and and I there are people who do that and it works for them, but and 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 I and I think. You know, Albert Ellis and Aaron Beck adapt, uh, uh, ad- adapted elements of Stoicism, but it just strikes me that it's just it's just so radical. It's just it's such a, a a radical philosophy from our perspective that, um, like, I'll give you an example. The one of the Stoics, Diogenes, a priest, um, precursors to Stoicism, Diogenes would uh, sleep in a what they call a pithos, which was a ceramic jug, because he, to, he was very, he, he's the person from whom the word um, aestheticism comes from. And he, um, he just said, you know, pain isn't important, pleasure isn't important, or it, 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 
he would give himself pleasure on his own rather than be with a woman or a man because that was the simplest life imaginable for him and that was superior in his mind but he, yeah. he was very self-denying and he and he um he didn't have he just lived in very humble like a very humble um uh, ceramic jar and that that's he was a, uh, an exemplar of stoicism and and that's and 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 even though people didn't adapt it to the same degree as he did that there was a a theme a core theme in in their philosophy and and i mean on from our perspective we can uh, did you want to say something uh yeah howard thanks um you had mentioned and i'm not um i agree uh, with what you said you're not a stoic but uh you're representing the stoic philosophy so uh and you said in the stoic philosophy they recommend doing things to retain your self-respect and dignity whereas in rebt uh -huh. we see self-respect and dignity is an idea in your comes from an idea in your head right so if you want to maintain self-respect and dignity look at your thinking that might be degrading that and then <coughs> change your thinking i think i think they might agree to that to a point but they another a, a core element of stoicism is um extreme realism and and a real in their view like certain the, dignity is we give ourselves dignity by behaving in a rational way according to our values and not just the way we think that's what they would say. Yeah, so that's a difference. Mick, you wanted to say something? Uh -huh. Well, I wanted to say uh, something, but then it comes to mind the phrase extreme realism. I don't think there's something as, as, I don't think there is something that is extreme realism. I think there's either realism or unrealism. Right, so, you don't see degrees in them? No, no, if I jump off the fifth story of a building, that's a bad idea. It's, it's uh -huh. not an extremely bad idea. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea that would have extreme consequences, but mm -hmm. the reality of it is the reality of it. Now, I do think there could be uh, degrees of adherence to uh, ex uh, realism, saying I am going to be realistic as much as I possibly can, right. or I'm going to try to be realistic. And if I'm not, it's not that big a deal. That would be a right. difference. But still, reality is reality. There are no degrees of reality. Well, well, the 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 answer that I think a Stoic would have to that is first of all the the main fact of realism isn't just like a correspondence theory, like what's happening around me. It's what's within my control and what's not within my control. And in my mind, that's that almost is like the Freudian notion of the, re, the reality principle. It's a very, it, it, it's something, it's something deeper in, in some ways and harder to practice. Howard, to, would you, would you agree a difference uh, is that with stoicism, apparently what's in your control and what's not in your control is clear. And they said that fame is not in your control. Whereas in yeah. REBT, we would say that fame is something you can work toward and you can control to what extent you work toward. Well, so, toward it. So, for example, mm -hmm. for example, Mick is a musician, an actor, and Mick, you work very hard at practicing these things because you would love to become famous. That's a, a goal of yours. So to some extent, that is in your control. Howard, are you going to say something? No, no, it's just that a stoic. I remember, I'm just a beginning student of this, but a stoics would say that that's an external. That's something that, even though it might seem within, you no, know, they would. I think they would say that something that it's it's a it might be a preferred indifference. It's something that I might prefer, but ultimately, it's something that relies on other people. So if I was to make make my self esteem or my self-image rely on that they would not recommend doing that so that's what i think a stoic response would be yeah mick well rabt would also say that you don't want to 
put your self-acceptance on anything. You want to have unconditional self-acceptance, but REBT does use the term self-acceptance rather than self-esteem. Self-esteem mm -hmm. is the buzzword all over the place. Right. But self-acceptance is really what we can do. REBT would also say there's nothing that we have complete control over. I want to unconditionally accept myself, but as a fallible human being, I, in all likelihood, will not be able to achieve that. You did early on use the word aspirational, which I think is a very good word because uh -huh. you can aspire to an ideal knowing that we're almost in all likelihood going to fall short of it. Well, what I would ask for you to do, and this is going beyond this session, I would be very curious if you were to read Professor Stevens' books and have book and have like a, a a, a scholar's grasp of it, not that I have that. And I would want to know what your encounter with that text would would lead you to believe. Because I, I think it's I find it fascinating. And I and I find um I mean it could just be simply that our lives are different now and we have different ideas and different needs. Or it could be that they're saying something that we need to hear. And, then, and my understanding is taking away from Professor Stevens' book is that the focus isn't really on the self. It's on it's not like accepting the self. It's like um, their idea is like to strengthen the self and to and to act virtuously and to be happy. And nowhere in the book, I don't. I and mean, that was my word, and maybe it was poorly chosen. Nowhere in his book did he did he mention self acceptance. Oh, Howard, Howard, yeah. I you highly recommend this book. Uh, so, if someone wants to get more information about the book, uh, would you give out your email address and people can contact you with? Uh, I can, I can, I can tell, show it on, I can tell people who are listening to you. It's Epictetus's Enchiridion by William O. Stevens. And it's, and I, I would be, I would be glad to do that. Okay. Okay. Very good. And we have uh, just time for last words. Mick, what? Uh, what would your last word? Well, I was going to say the reason that REBT advocates self-acceptance is that that is one of the biggest problems that human beings have across the board, not accepting themselves. I make a mistake, therefore I'm no good, I'm rotten, I'm a worthless worm, mm -hmm. or the world is so difficult and the world does not comply with my desires, the world is rotten world is no good or other people don't do what I want them to do and therefore they are rotten and they are no good. The reason mm -hmm. REBT addresses these things is because they are the most common human disturbances and self-acceptance, other acceptance and life acceptance are the three biggest factors towards us having peace of mind. And as we have peace of mind, we're able to assess reality and work where you mentioned <clears throat> uh dealing with reality and what can i change what can i not change that's how can i function in reality and the more rational we are the more realistic we look at things the more we can then make choices which are in our best interest and in the best interest of you other think? people and the world in which we live very you, good you, thank you, you mick and Howard, did you have a last word? No, I uh, just this is this is, is very um, good experience, and I thank you for listening to me. And yeah, and, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, and I, I'm, Howard, I just, I'm I'm good. Is there any book I can read about rational RETB? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. Um, Albert Ellis, the founder of RE Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, wrote over eighty books. So go to Amazon, look up mm -hmm. Albert Ellis, E L L I S. Mm -hmm. I I've written five books, one with Mick, and uh, the most popular one is called Three Minute Therapy. Uh, so thanks, Howard, for joining us, Brooklyn and librarian. And, and let me just throw out the book by Albert Ellis, How to Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable About Anything, Yes, Anything. Start with great, that. Great. I will. Very thank good. you. Okay. We, thank you. Thanks all. And I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein, clinical psychologist. Uh, join us next week for another scintillating uh, podcast. Thank you, Chris Rossini, our tech engineer. Comment below if you have thoughts or questions. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this or learned something from it. Volunteer, looks like Howard survived uh, as a volunteer, and I think it made our podcast 
very interesting. <coughs> and subscribe to the Three Minute Therapy podcast to do what, Mick? Stay on the rational side of life.